Donegal, the magnificence of the Northwest. For one weekend in June each year, this beautiful county is host to Ireland's most popular rally, the Shell Gemini International. For nestling amongst these hills of Donegal are some of the most demanding and exciting rally stages in Europe, stages like Knockalla, whose challenge attracts the best drivers in Ireland and beyond. People like Jimmy McRae, who come to Donegal to attempt Coleman's record of 15 international wins in this country. But his debut in the 20 Val Vardy is not to be. Well, we test, tested the car this morning and we've had big problems with engine management system. The car has a 20 valve engine and uh, it seems to be incompatible with the 10 valve wiring loom and we've worked at it, well the mechanics and engine guys worked at it for four or five hours and we just can't get the thing to go properly. properly. It is running though, I mean it, it will run but then it stops and what happens when it stops it drains the battery and you can't start it and uh, really think in safety you know we decided that uh, we should pull out. Jimmy's absence is not the only talking point as the skies over Letter Kenny are laden before the start. The weather mind is a bit tricky at the minute but uh, I'm looking forward to the rally. What about the weather? Is it going to cause you many problems? Well, it's obviously going to be the problem of choosing the correct tyre for the conditions. You know, with it being so showery, in one part of the country it can be very, very heavy rain and five miles up the road it can be bone dry roads, which is... Car number seven, the Sierra Cosworth of James Cullen. James, exactly what specification is this car? Uh, this is a Group A car to pull Group A specification. We've changed the, group one, we've changed the engine slightly since the uh, Circuit of Ireland to give it a little bit more top end, a little bit more punch, so uh, it should do any goal slightly better. But the weather may affect that. You know, it's uh, getting the, the power now transferred to the rear wheels and getting the traction will be the problem. So hopefully Dunlop will have the answer there. If it stays wet all the time, you know, it's wet for everybody. But if it starts to change, then you can be caught in the wrong tyres, which is a big problem. Isn't it? I think the first stage was actually dry up to 10 minutes ago, but it's raining out there now. Uh, having said that, uh, as the second stage is about 14 miles, Forest Horse, Kitty Bikes, I think it's dry over in that area. But uh, it's very hard to know what way the showers are falling, so we'll have to just have to wait and see. We've done a good rag again, it's a new car, a uh, Jet Racing Rally car, so uh, we haven't finished Donegal this few years, so we're looking for a finish and a good result as well. Michelle Gemini's pretty legs are firmly on the ground for the start of the third round of the Dunlop Tarmac Championship as the 130 strong field leave Letterkenny for the five Friday stages. In Austin McHale's Extravision BMW, a new co-driver, Dermot O'Gorman, settles in on stage one. Quick left, course. Slight right and quick left. 70. Absolute left and right, 100. Slight left foot at the three. Along the Brino stage, Austin comes across a natural hazard that wasn't in the pace notes. And slight left and long slight Towards the end of stage two, the sun is shining down on a Donegal leader, Vincent Bonner and the Donegal Oil Company, Manta 400. Just three seconds behind, tough opposition in the Tough Mac car, Bertie Fisher and local co-driver Rory Kennedy on the notes. The sensational new boy, Andrew Nesbitt, in the Philip White Tires Manta 400. Third after stage one. But listen, the Manta has died. Yellow flags warn early Group N leader Bob Fodden of the hazard around the corner where Nesbitt's car was stationary. Those loose stones in the last corner have dislodged the oil pump belt and two valuable minutes are lost by the Armagh driver. And pass left at the house. As Austin and Dermot get to know and trust each other, we scream down towards our junction. Nesbitt's problem promotes the Dunlop Championship leader to third. And 400, turn fast. Turn fast, way right, break early, loose. Caution, break early, loose. Very fast left, 120. Absolute right, 100, and caution, quick right, 70, very fast right. Another new name, Richard Smith, about to move up to fourth, 
but trying too hard here. Despite this, Smith will be less than half a minute behind McHale by Killy Beggs. And talking of sensations, Bruce Blake on his BIF Tarmac Scholarship Award is fifth on only his second international outing in the Manta. John Price completes the top six in the glorious sounding Metro 6R4. Nigel Evans is the co-driver, making it an all Welsh team. Surprisingly not in the Group N lead, Kenny McKinstry in the Caliber Cosworth. He lost time on stage one when a vacuum pipe came loose. Worst trouble to follow for James Cullen, who's blown a turbo. And talking of blowing it, that's Robin Lyons in the ditch. The Peugeot is well and truly stuck in a nasty position as Stephen Emerson approaches. Not much time lost by the Belfast Manta driver, but the minutes are migrating as the 205 is hauled back onto the road. Surprisingly little the worse for its hedge hopping. Maybe it's the presence of a pub on this corner, but there are certainly some crazy things happening in Graffy One. Overlooking stage four with the rally cars coming in the background, we have uh, Jimmy McRae, of course, should have been in this rally, but who better man to give us a little bit of benefit of his knowledge and maybe a little bit of criticism of his uh, fellow drivers. Jimmy, are you prepared to do that? Well, I think I will, yes. Uh, prepared to do that. I'd far rather be in the rally, but uh, anything to help you out, Bonner. As Fisher approaches, we learn that he has gone ahead of Bonner. Jimmy, dry roads, that should help the BMW. I would say so, yes. I mean, we actually were hoping for rain with the four-wheel drive car, but uh, it really suits the BM and the Cosworth now. Bertie certainly looks as though he's trying. Vincent Bonner and Seamus Boyle may have slipped to second, but there's only seconds in it. I think the Mantra will be suited to these roads. Uh, the, the bumps, the, the Mantra is very good over the bumps. <laughs> Here's Austin. He's been looking very quick all day. He's certainly, he's certainly trying there. He's leaving his break in a bit late, but he's trying very hard. Now, this is John Price in the little Metro 6R4. When I saw the Metros here today, uh, it gave me an inclination to get in one. Uh, it's certainly the car for this event. Might be a bit difficult in the bumps, but uh, certainly should, should be quick up around here. Very, very quick up round here. Just too quick. Well, now John Price is in big trouble as he's breaking one of the golden rules of rallying. He's travelling in the opposite direction of the stage. Richard Smith is next on the scene. And that delay will not have pleased him. Uh, this Smith's car is actually the one that Colin, our Colin, won his first national rally in. Price is still looking for a gap, and James McDade is due. I thought I'd seen everything at rally until I saw that. <laughs> well, that big problem actually running 30 second intervals because. Uh, car behind comes up very, very quick if you have a problem like what John Price had there. Now this is young Andrew Nesbitt who's just won his first uh, national rally round. Um, he's, he's a fellow we hold a lot of hope for. Well, this certainly seems to be very neat and tidy up to now. Yeah, very impressive, very neat and tidy. Here comes Cullen who's had big problems, this should be quick. James is obviously trying very hard. He had big problems in the first stage, I think. That looked good to me. It looked good, yeah, very quick. Desi McCartney, Jimmy. Now, that's uh, somebody you've rallied against many of the time. 
the very first time I came to Ireland in 19, uh, oh, when was it, 76, I think we had a big battle with Desi in the Group 1 days, he had an RS2000 and I had a Vauxhall Magnum and he's still at it. <laughs> Peter Lloyd in the, the second metro in the entry. See how quick the metro is from the bridge up. It's, uh, that's where it gains an acceleration. Four wheel drive out the corners and 300 knot horsepower. It's a car you really loved, wasn't it? <laughs> it was, I really enjoyed it. Enjoyed your vantage point up here. Very good, actually. It's one of the best vantage points I've had in rallying. Uh, it's it's been very in interesting. If you had to pick out one person of all that you saw, who would it be? Oh, that's not very nice. Uh, I think probably James Cullen was trying harder than anybody else. Probably because he's lost time and he's really pushing hard now. With Jimmy McRae's master class over, we turn our attention to another famous rallying name, Clark. For Matthew Clark is the son of the great Roger Clark, and he's in the top ten. Sligo men, Dominic and Stephen McLaughlin, in their usual push-on style in the Sunbeam TI. Carl Rogers has surprised the Donegal Motor Club seeding committee. From his number 51 start, he has climbed to 16th overall. More famous names are sons of famous names. Stephen Price could teach his dad John a thing or two about this corner. Alistair is the latest in the McRae dynasty to show the family talent for speed. By the end of the day, there are now three real contenders for the Shell Gemini International, and only 13 seconds separate all three. Bonner is back in the lead with one second on Fisher, and our camera car a mere 12 seconds behind the other BMW. Day two, and the action starts on Fanned Head. Vincent Bonner may be in an eight-year-old design, but it's not shaking his confidence. Fanned has been Fisher's bogey stage on two occasions in the past. Maybe not the place to close the one-second gap. McHale has no such inhibitions, and he starts the rally's big day in fine style. I'm aboard as we set joint fastest time on one of Donegal's great stages. Quick left, 120, and turn easy, square left. 120. Very fast right, 100. Very fast right, tighten. Repeat, tighten, and fast left. Easy, easy right, and left, straight press. Quick left. Quick left, and press, quick left. 70. No mistakes for the top three, but that's the last time we'll see Richard Smith as he crashes out at the end of the stage. And here's the other quick man, and it shows Cullen shares fastest on Bannard with McHale. Pat Kirk, the giant killer, the 1600 Nova is 14th overall. And Desi McCartney is enjoying his Indian summer in Donegal, lying fourth in Group N. The Peugeot Super Cup is paying its first visit to Ireland. Steve Eggleston has the lead. Now for Telecom Nokala, the stage that was Austin's downfall 12 months ago. Here's the deceptive left-hander that has caught out Austin and Vincent Bonner seen here in the past. Bonner taking it uh, slightly easy then, and with that obstacle behind him, he and Seamus Boyle can get on with defending their slender four-second lead. Bertie Fisher is next up the famous hill climb, and he and McHale are much happier with the softer suspension fitted to the BMWs by ProDrive since the Circuit of Ireland. As the Ballinamalla driver crests the hill, it's time for Austin McHale and his new co-driver Dermot O'Gorman to meet the challenge of Knockalla. Slight right, 150. Slight left, 
love. Red crest and slide right. Pull 50. And slide left. 150 to slip. Medium right. You can hear the relief in Dermot's voice as they get through that notorious left-hander. The rest of the time is relatively straightforward, but once over the top, it's a different story. The descent contains 120 mile an hour straights and drops towards Loch Swilly that are definitely to be avoided. And quick right, cut. And quick left over crest, cut, long, 70. Absolute. Right, 100. Downhill, slide right and quick right, tight to second half. Repeat, tight to second half. 100. Quick right and absolute press, 130. Slide right, 150. Press, 60, very fast left. Watch this one. Absolute right. Absolute straight press, deep middle, 150. Dip. Easy right, 200. Absolute right over press and slide right. That other great Donegal mounted driver, James McDade, is fourth, just two minutes behind the top three. But he has problems as Cullen is closing rapidly. And James sets up a sensational time, 11 seconds quicker than anyone, to take the telecom prize. No prizes, however, for Jerry McRae and Stanley Millard. The Nissan 240 can hardly make it over the mountain, and Jackie Harris has already made up 30 seconds. Seamus Murphy and Hugh Donnelly get a little crossed up here as they head towards a class win in their little Nova. But Seamus Hegarty is heading towards Knockalla Mountain. Amazingly, he will continue. Back at Milford, the leader arrives, and the bulletins tell us that things are very close. Well, Vincent, that one second overnight lead, is it still there? Yeah, there's a few more on to it. I think we're about five now, well, you know. But uh, it's very tight. You know, we have maybe won two stages, and the boys have maybe won one stage. And, you know, it's tight the whole way through, you know. We're kind of looking forward to today, though, weren't you? This, yeah. you this would suit the Manta. Well, you know, I thought it would have suited it better than yesterday, but obviously everybody else, you know, is on the wick. The wick's turned up today, so, you know, we're living with them and we're happy enough to be living with them, you know? Just swapping seconds out there this morning between um, it's about four or five cars, really, you know? So it's pretty hectic. So what were your good stages, what were your bad ones? Well, um, on Fan and Head, we were slightly misled at the end of the stage. There were two advanced finish boards. Normally there's only one advanced finish board on the actual finish board and uh, fortunately I slowed after the second advanced finish board and had to sort of start up again. We lost a few seconds there. And we were fastest on the first one and uh, I think at the second one uh, off the three. I don't know what James Cullen is doing but um, I think then um, uh, Vince is after getting two seconds back off the last one. So after the first three, I think there's two seconds between Bertie and ourselves, and uh, Vincent is coming about eight seconds. Oh, yesterday was just so disappointing. That, uh, I felt so down, so sick after the, the third one, the first stage, and dropped all the time. So we decided we got this morning just to try and prove a point, really. Just you have been proving a point? Yeah, well, it's been a good morning, and, and the car is really good now, and we're starting to get the hang of it, and I feel happy with it, especially after the few problems we had in the circuit. I think I've got part of the confidence back again now, and some very good time, so it just keeps us on the boil, and things uh, keep us on the hunt now come the Ulster, I think. Today is going reasonably well. Uh, there's no point in chasing the, the front three or four men today because we lost two minutes to them yesterday, so there's no point in making the commitment to try and catch them. Uh, there's two or three people in front of us this morning. We've managed to pull two places back so far, and uh, we've one or two places to try and get this evening. So where are you now, and where can you hope to get to? We're lying fifth at the moment. Uh, James Cullen is catching us very quickly, though, uh, but we, we let him do his own thing. As the Group A boys refettle right. for the next loop of stages, the Group N leaders discuss the last. Big stress, I'm not gonna, I mean, I, I come out of them, and it, I mean, even now, I don't know whether my notes are right for it or not. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, I have okay written on the note, but it's, and you're coming, I mean, you're coming for 120, 130 mile an hour at it. Yeah. 
and you still don't know whether you're not for right there or not. You know? Totally changed. Yeah. Well, I think it's just a question of actually doing it. The battle rages on, with the lead constantly changing. Bertie Fisher and rival Vincent Bonner are worried men in service. Well, apparently there's a spectator problem on current Yeah. Now, that's only what we've been told at them in the stage. But we were coming up to a flat press, probably about 80, 90 miles an hour. It could, be, it could have been 100 miles an hour, hard as you can go. There were people all over the place waving hands, right? And the sweeper car was parked very tight on the left-hand side of the road. Now, I'm immediately thought, this guy, they're all slowing us down because the sweeper car has went off the road, or pulled off the road, or whatever. And I'm sure I, we went a mile past the point, and it suddenly dawned on me there must be a spectator problem. So we backed off sort of for the rest of the junction. But with Vincent not having stopped, you know, yeah. you never know, like we've had, we've all stopped on stages before and found our station had cancelled or something like that. But the place that they've tried to stop the car is the crazy. You know, they could have all they had to do was walk a hundred yards down the road. Or even or even the other even go a hundred yards up the road. You know, he could have stopped us quite easily then. So the dispute is that they don't know if the stage is cancelled or not, was that it? It is cancelled now. Well we don't know whether we're excluded or not. That's fine. Why would you be excluded? Because we didn't stop at a stop for it. That's logic of it, you know. We now see this incident, which could have changed the result of the rally, from inside Austin McHale's car. Dermot O'Gorman, like Fisher and Bonner, was also confused, but not Quick Austin. Left, an absolute press, an absolute right, put 200. Go on, go on, go on. Go on. Right. Stop this car, so stop the car. No, 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 it's stop the stage. He's after stopping the stage. Uh, when we were halfway through the stage, there was, uh, was one of the um, sweeper cars right on the stage with a stop sign. And we stopped because we didn't know whether it was an accident or what was after happening. But um, I don't know if it was out for Bertie and Vincent. Uh, I'm sure, you know, their experience, if there was a stop sign out, they would have stopped. Well, they're, they're very confused about it. Both of them went through the stop sign. And, uh, First of all, they felt yeah. that it was in a very dangerous place. What? Uh, I cannot comment on where it was when they were going through, if it was there, but uh, when we came through, the, the uh, marsh was standing in the middle of the, middle of the stage with the stop sign out, and we obviously, when the stop sign was stopped, and we just stopped. You have no confusion whatsoever? No, well, where you were standing when we came through, there was no confusion, but that's not to say that he wasn't standing, he was standing in the same place when Bertie or Vince went through. Fortunately, there were no recriminations from the organisers who already had enough problems with cancelled stages during the day, so the race continued to letter Kenny. Alston desperately trying to close a four-second gap, and with Vincent a mere four seconds adrift of the second BMW, only eight seconds separated the first three for Saturday's grand finale. Six stages to decide the result between three people. It's the closest Donegal rally ever. For the experience like Austin McHale, the closeness of the competition and now the atrocious conditions mean pushing it right over the limit if he wants to win the rally that has only brought him bad luck in the past.
And very fast left and fast right. 120. Fast right, 120. Absolute left over pressure. Our trip through Muckish Gap graphically illustrates the risks. Right. But they are worth it, as Austin takes six seconds out of Fisher here to go back into the rally lead. Very fast left, bump, cut. Very fast left, bump, cut, 100. Slight left over crest, cut, 100. Absolute crest, 150, bump, straight crest, 60, bump, straight crest, 60. Easy left, and quick left, cut. An absolute left. 200. Quick right open. Five stages to go, and amazingly, this battle, which started three days ago between the top three, is still intact. But the Tough Mac car has now got low oil pressure. And a broken rotor arm later on in this stage wrecks an excellent run for Vincent Bonner and costs him seven minutes. Now, there are four stages to go. And as in Galway, it's between the two BMWs. Fisher looks neater, but there are rumours of a 10-second penalty for arriving late into service. James Cullen's storming drive brought him up to third after Bonner's demise. And Kenny McKinstry is in a calibre of his own in Group N. The final stage is normally a dawdle, but not so this year in Donegal. For Austin, the Donegal jinx is broken and victory comes to the new partnership. Bertie Fisher has actually been one second quicker on the stages, but the road penalties drop him to second. And here's Cullen, third and probably the fastest man in the rally. For Kenny, it's been a new car with the old flair and Group N and fourth overall. And John Price, despite going backwards on the first day, ends up in fifth place. And the class winners, Philip Sanford wins the 1300 Group N category, and Seamus Gallagher, seen here, takes the 1600 Group N. Steve Eggleston takes a lucrative Peugeot Super Cup and 1300 pounds with the two-liter Group N class. Stephen Price, son of Metro Man John, is the 1300 Group A winner. Seamus Murphy in the similar looking but 1600 engine Nova is class 6 winner. The 2 liter Group A category goes to David McElroy. In the modified 1350s it's Alistair McRae, son of Jimmy. Dominic McLaughlin wins the 1650 modified section and Cahill Rogers is the winner of the 2 liter modified cars and also the Spirit of the Rally Award for helping another competitor. James McClintock revives many memories, taking class 13 in the Mini Cooper S. Robbie Peoples is the class 14 winner, while Hugh Gallagher's more powerful escort wins class 15. And finally, Drexel Gillespie's well-driven Lotus Cortina takes the new historic section. The final few yards of the 1990 Shell Gemini Donegal International Rally. And for the second time in this year's Dunlop Tarmac series, our camera car has won. After many years of trying, Austin McHale has won the rally that he came within one second of winning in the past. And for Dermot O'Gorman, it's a remarkable debut in the BMW. The new partnership has brought a new experience for Austin in Donegal. We're very happy to have won the event this year. Um, Things have gone very good for us over the weekend and uh, it was tight between ourselves and Bertie and Vincent right up to the second last stage and uh, you know after having three seconds in the event and being beaten by one second uh, you know this year it has really all came together and we're, we're very happy to have won it. Dermot, of course your first uh, job you might say with Austin McHale, you've obviously thoroughly enjoyed it. Yes, um, it was a bit nerve-wracking today, some of the, the bumps over Muckish were a bit, little bit uh, Strenuous, both in you the had car one and me. Particularly bad bump, I believe. We had um, when I looked up, all I saw was the road in front of me, and I thought we were going to land on our nose, but we got away with it. We're here anyhow. And you're the winners. We're the winners. Yeah. <laughs> the sportsmanship of Bertie Fisher, beaten only by the regulations, has been outstanding. But the real hard luck story goes to Vincent Bonner. We broke the rotor arm, and it took us maybe two or three minutes to discover what was wrong. And there must have been two or three hundred people at the junction and we sent somebody down the road to get a rotor arm because it was the same as an RV car. 
and he came back with the wrong one. McHale and O'Gorman don the Dunlop Tarmac leader's hats, now with a 20-point advantage over Fisher. James Cullen moves up to third equal. In Group N, McKinstry is now 10 points clear of Bob Bowden.